Hello and welcome back. This is an overview about the rigging of quadrupeds for the second life environment. I will give you a step-by-step -step introduction into the creation of a basic horse skeleton. I show you in great detail how to rig the model. I will adjust some of the weights by using the weight paint tools, and finally I will create a very simple static pose for the export to second life. So, let's start with loading the horse model into Blender, and do some initial adjustments. For simplicity I will snap the cursor to the center of the view. Then I add a new Avastar character. And finally I set the pivot to the 3D cursor. And then scale the horse up to a convenient size. And at the very end I call, Object, Apply Scale. Well, I personally prefer to move the horse to a separate layer, so let me do this now by pressing the M key. Note that you can enable or disable the visibility of multiple layers by pressing the Shift key, while you click on the layer icons. OK. Our next task will be to morph the character's skeleton into a horse skeleton. Here we have to take care about some restrictions which are imposed by the Second Life animation system. The most important rule is that we cannot use extra bones to improve the skeleton, so whatever we create here, it always has to use the Second Life bones, and nothing else. But luckily Avastar has been designed with these restrictions in mind. And that is also one reason why we have a visible set of green control bones for creating the animations. And a normally hidden set of blue second life bones for exporting the meshes. And normally both bone sets are coupled by animation constraints. So we actually do not at all need to bother with the second life bones. Instead of that, we will only modify the green control bones and later add some Avastar magic potions, to automatically adjust the SL bones as needed. So, let's now prepare the Avastar character for our task. First of all we will delete the default Avastar shapes, because we really do not need them for the horse. You can do this by navigating to the Object Properties section of the armature, and there use the function, Delete Avastar Shapes. But of course you also can delete the shapes manually if you prefer. Okay, now let's move on to the object data properties of the armature. And there, enable the visibility for the structure bones and the extra bones. I also prefer to change the bone display type to octahedral stick shapes. And if it is not already set, then I will also enable X-ray mode. Now we are ready to edit the skeleton. So let's get back to object mode. Enable the visibility of the horse layer. And set the armature to edit mode. Now select all visible skeleton bones, and move them such that the horse's hind legs roughly match up with the legs of the human skeleton. But hold on, not all skeleton bones can be selected. By default the structure bones are protected from selection, but we want to move these bones for our purposes as well. Hence we have to enable structure select for the rig. You find this function in the custom mesh panel in the tool shelf. Now we can select all bones and move the entire skeleton to the desired place. So. Then let's go on and morph the skeleton step by step into a horse skeleton. Fortunately we have a couple of options to make our life easier here. First we can use the fact that the skeleton is symmetrical. For example take a look at the hip joint. When we enable X mirror, then editing a bone will automatically apply the mirrored operation to the bone on the other side of the rig. We also must be aware that some bones hide other bones, as you can see for example here on the ankle bone. 
In this case you can always use the rubber band select, by pressing B on the keyboard, and then span the selection region over the joints or bones which you want to move, and finally move the selection to its destination. Okay, we can now move upwards along the horse legs, and adjust the bones as needed. When we get up to the cog bone, then we have to take care of it. First let me rotate the upper skeleton by about 90 degrees. Then let's take a closer look at the pelvis bone. Actually you see two pelvis bones here, created in opposite directions. We will keep these bones as they are, we only move the end joints towards the horse's back. This will become relevant later when we get to animation. And let's make the cog bone bigger, so that we can grab it easily when we want to animate the entire horse. Now let's continue to adjust the upper part of the skeleton. You can see here that I frequently switch between grabbing a single joint, and using the rubber band select, when I want to select or deselect multiple joints or bones at the same time. Up till now I have only worked in side view. Now let's adjust the hind legs in back view. You can enable back view by first pressing the control key, and then select front view on the number pad. Now let's hide the hind legs for a moment, so that we can concentrate on the front legs. And let's switch to front view. Let's first adjust the eyes location. And then adjust the arm bones to the horse's front legs. Finally go back to side view and adjust the bones to their final location. And then unhide the hind legs again. And here it is, our horse skeleton is ready for usage. Well, no, not yet. Until now we have only worked on the animation bones. We still need to take care about the second life bones. So let's enable the visibility of the SL bones. You see they are still arranged as a human skeleton, so we now need to apply all of our bone editing to these bones. But don't worry, we have a function for this. Open the tool shelf and search for, snap SL bones to rig. Okay, on first sight it looks like the SL bones have been deleted, but actually they only have been snapped to the control bones. 
we can see much better what happens when we enter pose mode. Here you see that the SL bones and the control bones now match up again. And now let's move on to our final task, namely rigging the horse and making an initial pose. So let's go to object mode, select the armature and the horse, and then look up the parenting function in the tool shelf. Note that we will do a simple parenting without any weight copy. It just makes no sense to try using the human mesh weights on a horse shape. Ensure that your armature is in pose mode and only the second life bones are enabled. Then select the horse and go to weight paint mode. Select all bones. And now generate the weights by calling, weights, assign automatic from bones. Now the weights are preset to reasonable values. You can do a quick check by selecting individual bones and see how the weights are defined. However there are two bones which should not at all be weighted to the mesh, this are the eyes bones. As you can see here the weights on the eyes distort the mesh shape. Well, we could simply delete the weight groups of the eyes, but we also can select the eye bones and then use the remove weights function from Avastar. But regardless of how we do it, at the end we have to check whether the weighting is still okay. So let's decouple the second life bones from their control bones, so that we can rotate them for inspection. The function is in the tool shelf, please look for, unlock SL bone rotations. When we now rotate the skeleton bones, then we can check for apparent weighting errors, and fix them if needed. For the eyes it is sufficient to enable the blur brush. Then enable X mirror in the tool shelf. And take care to remove the blue spots inside and above the eye holes. So, by now we have almost accomplished all of our tasks. Hence we can move ahead and start doing our animations. But since this tutorial is only about rigging, let's just do a simple horse pose, and verify that the rig works as expected. Ok, so let's lock the SL bone rotation again to the control bones. Then switch over to the armature. And make only the green control bones visible. and then create your pose in the usual way. For some bones you will see that the original constraints no longer work well. We can fix that by either adjusting the constraints settings, or we simply can disable the constraints of the currently selected bone from within the properties sidebar of the 3D view. We even can select all bones at once and disable all constraints by one click. And finally, when our pose is finished, select all bones and then press the I key, to create a new keyframe. You want to select lock rot here. And at the very end go to the render properties section and export the pose as a second life animation. By now we can only create a static pose, because we have defined just one single frame. And we will define an infinite loop such that the horse keeps in that pose as long as the pose is active. So, that's all about what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. 
but we are not yet at the end of all possibilities. That is, you can also configure Avastar's IK rig for your horse, dog, fish, or for any other non-human shapes. If you want to learn more about how to get the most out of Avastar, then please consider to purchase our advanced tutorial, Non-Humanoid Creature Creation for Second Life. The advanced tutorial contains a written PDF text document, an extended version of this video tutorial with many more tips and tricks, a detailed description about customizing the rig, and a commercially usable blend file of this horse model. Thank you for watching.